Hey there, this is Kamal, and in this video, we're gonna carry on with what we were learning in the previous video about Angular. So let's get this started. All right. So first things first. Why do you think we need to learn about Angular when we can actually create websites using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? So the main reason why we opt for Angular is because Angular provides us with a structured format that we can actually follow to create a website. If you create a website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, then the website does not follow any structured format. And because of that, if you create a large scale application, it becomes difficult to actually manage all those things and also, you know, add or remove any kind of logic. And that's where Angular comes into picture. And also Angular is a framework based on JavaScript. So because of that, there are a lot of advantages as well. We'll get into that later on. But for now, let's actually understand the Angular project structure and see what are the things that we need to know about the Angular project. All right, so in the previous video, we've seen how you can actually install Angular and also we've seen how we can create a project using some commands. And we've seen that the logic actually starts from a file called as index.html. Apart from the basic boilerplate template, the only thing that is new here is the app hyphen root. So in order to actually understand what this app hyphen root is, we need to understand what are components inside of Angular. So everything inside of Angular runs based on components, right? So components can be thought of as simple code blocks that you can embed wherever you want. So every component has four files associated with it. The first one is the HTML file. The second one is the CSS file. The third one is the TypeScript or the JavaScript file. And the fourth one is the testing file. So you can leave out the testing file and you can think of the TS file or the TypeScript file as a JavaScript file for now. And apart from that, you have the CSS and the HTML, right? So this here that you're seeing here, that is app iPhone root is a component as well. So this is actually present inside my app folder. So if I go to my app folder in here, you have the app component, app HTML, app TS and app, you know, component.spec.ts. This is the testing file and you don't need to worry about this. So this app component.ts is where you'll write the logic that is the JavaScript logic. And this HTML is where the markup is present and CSS is where the styling is present, right? So in order to actually understand about components, let's go back to the browser for the mock blog that we had previously seen. So this is the blog that we're going to create, right? So in this as well, there are multiple components, right? So there are a lot of things that is happening here, but what we generally do is that in any website that we create, we divide everything into components. So in this page as well, you can think of the header as a single component, right? So this particular header can be thought of as a component. Then we have a component called as a hero. So this is a hero section component. Then we have a post section, which is itself a component. Then we have the footer section, which is also another component. Now inside of these, there are child components as well. Like in this post component section, we have individual posts, right? So that in itself is a component. So we have a post component, a combination of multiple post components is going to create a post component. So you can think of the structure as something like this. So at the top, you have the index.html file. Below that, you have the root component, which is given to us by default by, you know, the Angular application. That is the app hyphen root that you previously seen. Then we have, let's say in this case, a header component, a hero component, a post component and a footer component. And inside the post component, you have another child component called as post. So we have all of these components and we have to actually include that inside our app root component. So the way that we actually embed these four components inside the root component is by using the selector that is given to each and every component. So each and every component has a selector to it, or you can think of it as a name of that component, which we can actually type inside the root component and that particular, you know, component will be embedded into the root component. So if I go back to my code inside this as well, you can see that inside the index.html page, we have written app hyphen root, which is a selector or the name of the root component. So if I go to my root component and if I go to the TS file of that, you'll see that there is something here called as at the rate component. And in that we have the selector called as app hyphen root. So every component that you generate will have these four files in which these three files are the important files that is CSS, HTML and TS. And in the TS file, you'll have a selector which can be thought of as a name of this particular, you know, component file structure, right? So you can embed this app hyphen root wherever you want. And that particular component will be embedded. Like, so in this case, if I go to my index.html, you'll see that apart from the boilerplate template, you have nothing else, right? But in the browser, you'll see some data is present. So if I, you know, start the server, like if I type in ng space serve. All right, so the compiling is done. Now let's copy the URL and let's go back to the page. So I'll open my browser and let's paste it here. Now, as you can see here, we have the content present here, but we don't have that particular content present inside the index page. If I, you know, right click here and click on view page source, you'll see that inside the page source as well, we have the basic boilerplate template and we have the app hyphen root. 
there is no where where we can actually see this particular data right so that means the only logical solution is that this data is actually being replaced with this app hyphen root right so this is where the logic is being imprinted and it is being generated from so in order to actually understand that if i go to my app component.html which is the root component html page if i remove everything from here and if i type in a h1 saying hi if i save that and if i go to the browser you'll see that you'll have hi here that means that whatever type in inside the you know app component.html will be actually rendered into the index.html page because of this selector that we have here so wherever you want to render a component you can type in the selector and that component will be rendered so in this way if you want you can actually add in some more components and you can link those internally as well like in this case if i want i can create a new component and add the component.selector name inside the app component.html page as well okay so let me showcase how that can be done so let's generate a new component so in this case what i'll do is that i'll create a new terminal and that let's type in ng generate then component then let's type in the component name so in this case let's say i want to create the header so what i'll do is that i'll type in components slash header so what i'm doing is that i'm creating a folder called as components here and in that folder i'm creating the component called as header so if I now click on enter, you'll see that there is a folder created here called as components. Inside that we have a folder which is header that is a component folder that was created, right? So now if I go to this as well, you'll see that you'll have four files. So similar to how as I said previously, you'll have four files for every component that you create. In this as well, you'll go to the TS file and here you have the selector that is app hyphen header. So if I go to my component page, that is a root component. And if I type in app hyphen header, and if I click on this, that should be auto filled. Now let's save that and go to the browser. You'll see that you have header works, right? So this is actually being generated from the header file. So if I go to my header component.html, you'll see that you have header works. So this is, you know, given default when you create a new component. So in this way, you can actually include any component wherever you want inside your project structure and that should be rendered. And similarly, what you can do is that you can create another component for footer as well. So let me create a new component for footer. So I'll type in this and instead of this, I'll type in footer and that's going to generate another components folder in that you have the footer, right? So here as well, you can go to the TS file and the selector is app hyphen footer. So what I can do is that I can embed this by going to this component page and that I can type in app hyphen footer. If I save that, you'll see that you have footer works as well. So in this way, you can generate any number of components that you want and you can embed those components wherever you want by using the selector that we have. So one more thing that you need to observe here is that if I go to my footer component, you can see that apart from the selector, we have two more things present here. That is template URL and styles URL, right? So let's not worry about what we have in this particular page. Let's only worry about what is there inside the add the rate component. So this add the rate component provides us with a few properties. That is selector, template URL, and styles URL. So what's happening here is that we can actually create a component, but how do you link the individual component files with each other? Like in this case, like for the folder, we have component.css, HTML and TS. How does, you know, the Angular know these three files are actually part of a single component? The way that we, you know, configure them and link them is by using the add the rate component. Now inside the add the rate component, apart from the selector, you have the template URL, which is linking the HTML file to the TS file. Similarly, you have the styles URL, which is linking the CSS file to the TS file. So in this way, you can actually link the HTML and CSS both to the TS files. And in this way, Angular knows that all three of these are part of a single component that is footer, right? So whenever you actually embed the, you know, app footer component, that is the selector, automatically this HTML will be rendered. So if you have any styling, you can type it here and that will be applied to the footer component. Now, apart from this components, you have something else called as modules. So you can think of modules as, you know, external libraries or internal libraries, which are you know having some predefined logic. So in this case, like, let's say I want to use Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is an external library and I can actually use that inside my Angular application by downloading that and adding inside of my project structure. The way that we do that is by using the NPM, that is a node package manager. So similar to how you have Python package manager for the you know, Python modules here as well, you have node package manager using which you can actually download and install any kind of module that you want. So in this case, whenever I download something that will actually be added to my package.json file. 
So let's not worry about what's there here. So the only thing that you need to see here is that you have a section called as dependencies. So whenever you install a new module, automatically that module name and the version of that module will be typed out in the dependencies. And you don't need to do that. That will be done automatically by Angular. But you just need to know that whatever, you know, library that you install will be, you know, noted down here. Apart from that, if you want to use, you know, predefined modules present inside of Angular or any kind of other module, then you have to go to your app.module.ts file and that you have to actually import those modules. And not only modules, you have to actually import your components as well. Like in this case, you have the header component and footer component, which we had generated, right? So these were not present by default. These were created by us. So whenever you create a new component, automatically that component will be imported into the app module.ts and that will also be included in the declarations as well. But let's not worry about what the syntax is here. So you just need to know that whenever you create a new component or you want to use, you know, any kind of, you know, module that is present inside of Angular, then you have to add that into this app.module.ts and only then you'll be able to actually use them, right? So we'll be getting more into this later on in the upcoming videos. But for now, you need to know that whenever you create a new component, that will be added here. And if you want to, you know, use a uh, inbuilt module as well, you have to actually import that into this. Only then you can use it. Now let's go back to my app component.html. So the thing is that generally instead of any Angular component, you have a root component. And in this case, that is the app component.html, right? So this is the root component and that is what is being included here as well. So generally what we do is that we have the header and footer, which is common for every page inside of our application. The only thing that is changing here is the middle section that we have between the header and the footer, right? And this is something, you know, like we generate dynamically. Like, let's say I have, you know, two pages. So let me create two components, which signifies two pages, right? So let me open my terminal and let's create two pages or two components in this case, because everything inside of Angular is a component. Even a page can be thought of as a component. So let me create a new component. And there's a shortcut for creating or generating components that is ng space g space c, which stands for generate component. Then you can type in the folder name, which is components. If you don't want to place your components inside the components folder, you can directly type in the component that you want to create. Like let's say I can type in home and I'll be able to create a component directly inside my app folder. But in this case, I want to segregate them and I want to place them inside the components folder. So I'll type in components at the start. So it's going to be components slash home. So once I type that out and I click on enter, that's going to generate the component that is home and that will be placed inside the components folder. Now here you have the home component. Similarly, let's create a blog page as well. So it's going to be component slash blog. So now, as you can see, we have the components and blog. So what I'll do now is that let's say I want to actually include the home section inside my app component, which is the root component. So instead of having hi, I'll type in app hyphen home, which is the selector for the home component. So you can go to the home component and the TS file as well. You'll see that it is app hyphen home. Now, once I save this and go to the browser, you'll see that we have home works, right? So that means the header is working. The footer is working. Similarly, we have the home works. If I remove home and if I type in blog, you'll see that we have blog works, right? So if you go to, you know, the application that we were previously seeing, you'll see that here as well, you have the header, you have the footer. If I go to my blog section, you'll have the header, you'll have the footer. The only thing that is changing is the, you know, section that we have between the header and the footer. Even on the contact page as well, you have the header, footer. The only thing that is changing is the section in between. So that means this section that you're seeing here is the only thing that is, you know, being changed. Apart from that, the header and the footer will remain constant. So what we generally do is that since this is the only section that is being changed and this is, you know, actually linking to the URL bar. So if I, you know, go back to my browser as well, as you can see here right now, we are inside the home section. When I click on blog, you'll see inside my URL, you'll have something like slash blog. So that signifies my blog page. If I click on contact, that's going to go to slash contact and that signifies my contact page. So whenever I type in slash blog inside my URL, that should redirect me back to my blog page. And if I remove that completely, that should re redirect me back to my home page. So in this way, you are actually linking whatever you want inside the URL to your pages dynamically. So the way that we actually link the URL with, you know, the pages that is present inside our application is by using the routing module, right? So since we want to make this dynamic, so let's say I want to showcase the blog. 
So whenever someone types in slash blog, he should be you know shown the blog component, and whenever someone types in nothing, he should be shown the home component, and whenever someone types in the contact, he should be shown the contact component. So the way that you can map that is by going to the routing module. So inside this, you have app hyphen routing dot module dot ts. So this is where the logic is being written. So let me you know give you an example and I'll explain what is happening. Alright, so as you can see here, what I've done is that I've gone to the variable called as routes, and in that variable, I've written a object that is a JSON object, right? So it's an object literal. And in that, I have you know two objects. The first one is having two properties that is path and component. The second one also has two properties or keys called as path and component. Now the first one has a path which is empty and that is being linked to the home component. Similarly, the second one has a path called as blog and it is being linked to the blog component. So that means whenever someone types in nothing inside the URL bar, the home component has to generate. And whenever someone types in you know blog slash blog, the blog component should generate. It's not slash blog in this case. So what happens here is that you don't type in slash blog. Instead, you just type in blog, and that signifies slash blog, right? So whenever someone types in blog inside the URL bar, this blog component is being generated. But where do you think we actually need to generate this? The place that we actually generate that is inside our root component, right? So in this case, we want to generate it here, right? So the way that we can do that is by using something called as a router outlet. So I can type in router outlet, and you know that will be auto filled. Now what's happening here is that this header and this footer is you know static or constant it doesn't change this router outlet you know is being changed based on the url that you're trying to type here now if i go to my browser let's go to the application you'll see that we have home works now if i go to my url bar and if i type in slash blog you'll see that it changes to blog works but the header and the footer remains constant that means the content present in between the header and footer is being changed based on the url that we type inside my url bar and this URL that I'm typing here is called as an endpoint. It's a routing endpoint. So this endpoint signifies what page has to load or what component has to load based on what is being typed here, right? So in this way, you can create multiple pages, right? So you can create multiple pages and you can link those, you know, path and component based on the routing module. So you don't need to worry about what's happening here. The only thing that you have to worry about is this object literal that is being typed here. So based on the path that is being typed, you have to generate or showcase a particular component, right? So in this way, you can create a website having multiple pages and you can, you know, render those pages based on the routes or the URL that is being typed in, right? So in the upcoming videos, we'll be actually creating a header component and a footer component with some actual data. And we also create some pages and we can showcase that by using the router outlet. And if you want to know more about these things, you can actually go to the Angular documentation. So, you know, you can actually search for angular.io. And if you go to the documentation section, and if you go to, let's say, routing, then this as well, you'll have, you know, whole section regarding how you can actually create a routing or how you can actually link those pages to your own application as well. So we've already seen how we can do that. But if you want, you can go through this. All right, so before closing this off, I just wanted to say that this video was made in collaboration with Packet Prep. So Packet Prep is a training and placement company located in Hyderabad. And these videos were specifically made for the job guarantee training program that they have going on right now. And that is the full stack Java developer program. So apart from these free video lectures, they also have some premium content as well, like lecture notes, practice and test papers for you to get better at your core concepts. And they also have offline as well as online classes for this program. And they also conduct multiple demo sessions as well. So you can attend any of these demo sessions and understand the things they are teaching as well as their training approach firsthand. So if you're interested, I provided the website link in the description down below. You can go there and check them out. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you have liked today's video until now. If you did, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.